The mayor of Cape Town, Jordan Hill Lewis, has published a 10 point plan to bring an end to what he calls a fully fledged socioeconomic crisis. His action plan includes tax breaks on capital investments, quicker registration period for independent power producers, and releasing municipalities from needing approval from energy. Uh, Minister Gwede Mantashe for electricity procurement. Uh, mayor Jordan Hill Lewis joins us now to elaborate on the feasibility of his action plan. Good evening, Mayor, and thank you so much uh, for joining us here on Newsfeed, the PM edition. Good evening. Very nice to be with you from a load shedding in Cape Town. So excuse the darkness and the torch, but that's, this is what we have to do in South Africa, and it's the perfect setting to talk about the urgency of this issue. Let's go straight into it, Mayor. Um, you, you, you have put down a 10-point plan, but before we uh, dwell into some of the points that you've established there, what would you say is key looking at overall uh, to dealing with the issue of load shedding in South Africa, and particularly from your perspective as the Mayor of Cape Town? The key thing is political will. There's absolutely no technical reason, there's no technological reason why South Africa should still have load shedding 15 years later. And in fact, it's getting worse. This year will be the worst year of load shedding we've ever had. Uh, the, the reason is political will, a lack of clear, certain policy direction, and an enormous amount of bureaucracy, an incredibly slow process that means that we just cannot get out of this crisis anywhere near fast enough to save our economy. Uh, and that is the key reason. And in Cape Town, we are saying we're not going to, we're not going to put up with that kind of failure forever. We're going to get on and, and try to do it ourselves. Mr. Mayor, what is at the heart of your 10-point plan? And, and how feasible is it from your perspective? I think every one of the 10 things I've said are immediately feasible and they are not, none of them you will see require uh, building an enormous power plant. They are all regulatory, regulatory and policy uh, interventions that the president and the government could do now and effectively they can be summarized as simply opening the doors wide open to say we have a national power crisis. It is translating into a economic and social crisis as well. Let's do away with all of these restrictions, open the doors and say we will buy as much power as quickly as possible. Let's get it into the grid now. No restrictions, no uh, endless bureaucracy and red tape. Uh, let's just get this done as quickly as it is feasible to do. One of the points that you mention is uh, you say that declare in clear terms that municipalities do not require approval from Energy Minister Gwede Mantasha for electricity procurement. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about that and, and why is that? Because you, you just touched now on the issue of policy and regulations. Yes, well, this is a great point because there's so much grey area. We are not sure as the city of Cape Town, you know that we are trying to push very hard to buy independent power and uh, end load shedding in Cape Town. We're not sure. Honestly, no one has been able to tell us clearly just a simple one-line answer as to whether we have to go through the long, tardy, or tedious process of getting ministerial approval for, uh, f to buy our own power, or whether we do not. Treasury tells us one thing. Uh, the, another department tells us another thing. ESCOM uh, has a view on it. Our own lawyers have a view on it. It is just absolutely confusing, and this is why there's so little of this investment happening. So I'm, I'm saying we're going to press ahead without permission, but it would really be great if they could just simply put out a, a, a memorandum and say, enough confusion, this is exactly our position, this is the policy, you do not need permission, go for it and get going with these, uh, with these projects. You, you, you spoke about uh, earlier on, rather one of the points that you mentioned is the abolishment of the uh, 100 megawatts licensing threshold. And earlier on, there were a number of experts who were talking about that. I mean, for you, why, why is it key that we need to uh, abolish this, this licensing? Is it about increasing uh, and making sure that there's more generation available for IPPs? Yes, because there's, there's a lot of... Uh, projects which are only economically feasible when they achieve great scale. So 100 megawatts may not be big enough uh, for them to achieve economy of scale. 
and and so they, those investments won't happen because of that arbitrary limit. You know, let's be honest that 100 megawatts was basically just plucked out of the air. There's no there's no technical reason for 100 megawatts. It just sounded like a good round number. It could be 200. It could be 500. But in fact, we don't need any limits. We can just say reduce the limits, uh, remove the limits entirely. We need as much power as quickly as we can get it. But does that not uh, open it up to, I guess, abuse, lack of a better phrasing, if uh, we say it's uh, open-ended? No, no, I don't think so. I, I think that ESCOM perfectly understands that its own future is no longer in power generation. ESCOM's future is in power transmission and distribution. So, it, you know, the, I think the reason they've kept it at a, at, at a small cap is because they want to try and limit the competition with ESCOM in the generation space. But ESCOM's future is not in the generation space. It's in, it's in an entirely new different and different business. And ESCOM knows that. ESCOM's perfectly ha happy with that. That's why it's going ahead uh, with splitting its, its business. So, the, really, the government needs to get on board. There's been talk and plans that we've had, uh, Mr. Mayor, about uh, the Ankerland plant, uh, plant in, in Atlantis in Cape Town. You also mentioned how this uh, needs to be factored into your 10-point plan. Tell us a little bit more about that. Ankerland is a really massive uh, open-cycle gas turbine that belongs to ESCOM. It provides a lot of power, and it is ready to uh, to transform from burning diesel into burning natural gas, liquid natural gas. So if, if we could get a supply of gas into the Saldana Bay Harbor to supply Ankerlef with gas, you could have a fairly significantly sized power plant there that could burn, uh, could generate power burning uh, natural gas at a much, much cheaper rate than what ESCOM is currently spending burning diesel. Diesel is totally unsustainable as a source of energy. It is just uh, kind of staggeringly expensive. Uh, so it would really be a very wise move in the, in the near future to, to convert that plant and to get a supply of gas so that it can run cheaply. And just finally, Mr. Mayor, you, 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 your, your last point here, and you're saying you talk about the establishment of a power crisis unit in the National Treasury uh, with representation from municipalities. But, but then the big question is when you have something like this, um, how, how do we make sure that it's just not another task team that we've seen in government or that is within government? Yeah, that's a good question. My, that was my fear as well, that this, this you know, would just be lost as another team, another operation, Pakisa, another so on, uh, committee, conference, and so on. But I really hope that this crisis has you know, given the momentum and the sense of urgency that the government has lacked in the past that says, actually, we should have a group of people who are focused on nothing else. This is all they do every day, is how to remove these any block, remove any hurdle in the way of uh, municipalities uh, and government buying more power and quickly, and that they report directly to the president and to the minister of finance on a daily basis for the progress that they make, uh, and, we, and that they get it done quickly. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much uh, for coming through to talk to us. I appreciate your time.